A key attribute of durability is good abrasion resistance. Abrasion resistance is defined as the ability of a fabric to resist loss of surface as a result of friction with itself or another material. Key factors in fabric abrasion are the type of abradant, the direction of force, the amount of abradant force, the tension on the substrate, and whether the material is wet or dry. The goal of abrasion testing is to reach one of three endpoints. Cycles to failure is one evaluation endpoint. In this scenario, the material is exposed to the abradant until a complete rupture of the construction takes place, or yarns begin to break, or a hole appears. Another goal in abrasion testing is the percentage loss in strength of the material before and after a specified number of cycles of testing. The third option for abrasion testing is the evaluation of any visual change of the surface of the specimen. In this scenario, there may be loss of color, distortion of the surface, or both. With regard to surface change, the abrasion may cause a loss or increase in luster, hairiness, loss of surface pile, matting, pilling, and other forms of distortion. With all these tests, performance standards are expressed as minimums. In reporting the data, the type of test performed, the abradant used, the testing lab conditions, and other pertinent information are also listed. There are three types of abrasion, flex, flat, or edge. Flex abrasion occurs when a material is bent around an abradant surface. The action of the material around the abradant is typical of most end-use applications in that fabrics are typically not used in a flat condition. Flat abrasion results from rubbing the specimen against a flat abradant surface. This type of abrasion would be similar to pants sledding across a chair, the use of a tablecloth or a bedsheet. Edge abrasion occurs when a fabric is folded around itself or when multiple layers of fabric are fused together. Examples are cuffs of shirts and pants, waistbands, hemmed areas of a garment, creases, and pleats. The abrasive force is applied directly to the edge of multiple layers. Most apparel and home furnishings are subjected to at least two of these types of abrasion. However, abrasion testing instruments apply only one type of abrasion. The measurement of a fabric's abrasion resistance is, at the least, complex. Abrasion resistance results can be affected by many factors, such as fiber content, yarn configuration, fabric construction, chemical finishing, mechanical finishing, and the test method. Testing conditions include the type of abradant, the action of the abradant on the specimen, the tension on the specimen, and other aspects. Finally, the training and judgment of the test operator is paramount in importance. He has to be aware of the particulars of setting up the machine and exercise good judgment as to when the test is complete as to point of failure and to apparatus setup as the test progresses. Therefore, abrasion resistance testing gives a general evaluation of the product's durability. The flex abrasion test is designed to determine the abrasion resistance of woven or non-woven textile fabrics by flexing the fabric on a specially designed test instrument. Fabrics that have excessive stretch do not perform properly with this test. The values are expressed in SI or inch-pound units. The method used is ASTM test method D3835, standard test method for abrasion resistance of textile fabrics flexing and abrasion method. The flex abrasion test measures the durability of a substrate that is bent, flexed, or curved around an abradant bar. The flexing force used in this abrasion test is measured by subjecting the specimen to a unidirectional and reciprocating folding around the standardized bar. The conditions of pressure, tension, and abrasive action are precisely specified.
The measure of abrasion resistance is evaluated by two methods. In the first, the specimen is tested for breaking force prior to and after the abrasion cycles. The percent loss in strength due to abrasion is calculated. In the other test method, the specimen is abraded to rupture and the number of cycles is recorded. In some applications of flex abrasion, the color change and the appearance change in the fabric surface may be agreed upon by parties involved and become part of the criteria for the specimen passing or failing. In these cases, the knowledge and abilities of the operator are critically important. The abradant bar used for the test is considered a permanent abradant and is made of a hardened metal. It's assumed that the abradant will not change appreciably in a specific series of tests. The bar's abrasive properties can be affected and even change due to the pickup of materials during testing. These include chemicals and other material deposited from contact with the test fabrics. As a result, the bar should be cleaned with alcohol as needed. The abradant bar must be checked at frequent intervals using a calibration ribbon to make sure the bar is in good condition. As with all durability tests, conditions of temperature and relative humidity are critical for the test to be accurate and reproducible. A commonly used flat abrasion test makes use of the Martindale abrasion tester. This is covered in the ASTM test method D4966, Abrasion Resistance of Textile Fabrics, Martindale Abrasion Tester Method. Fabrics of all types may be tested by this method, but difficulties may arise with pile fabrics. The Martindale tester has mounting positions for the specimen and the abradant. The bottom mounting position uses a large round sample or a abradant and the top position holds a small round test specimen. In the normal abrasion test, the specimens are die cut to the specified size. Whether woven or knit, the die punches out the specified number of specimens for the test. Shown here is a woven twill. These specimens are interlock knit. Here are the components of the test displayed for viewing. These include the specimen, the backing pad, the two-part sample holder, and the device for loading and locking the sample into the holder. The bottom position has the abradant. An abrasive material from the 3M company called Trizact is commonly used as the abradant to achieve better consistency from test to test. However, other abradants can be used. To start the test, the operator mounts the specimen into the top sample holder. The loaded specimen is then placed face down on top of the abradant on the bottom. The top of the tester is then lowered and the spindle is guided through the top plate. Once all specimens are loaded, the tester is started.
Abrasion resistance using the Martindale tester is measured by subjecting the flat specimen to a rubbing motion. The direction of the abrasion is in the form of a geometric figure that begins as a straight line which gradually becomes a widening ellipse which eventually forms another straight line in the opposite direction and then traces the same figure again. The cycling of abrasion is performed for a specified number of times, such as 5,000. If the specified endpoint is a complete rupture, then the tester is run for a specified number of cycles. The holder is removed and the specimen is evaluated for failure. It may also be compared to a non-abraded specimen. If failure has not occurred, the tester is restarted. If rupture is near, the test continues for a few more cycles and is evaluated again. Shown here are the original fabric before testing with three specimens that have been abraded to failure. Notice that there is significant loss of color as well as a rupture of the surface of the woven specimen. The number of cycles to failure is 8,200. If surface change or color loss is the mandate for a particular number of cycles, the specimens are rated upon reaching that goal. The entire test is performed under controlled conditions of pressure and abrasive action.